be what? alive. It is the Champagne Rugby Podcast coming to you from the Export Beer Garden Studio. And take that, Ireland, you bunch of green wearing, Guinness and drinking, fucks. fucking sex as shit. No, I actually love the Irish, but nonetheless. I'm such a fan of the Irish, and it really feels so them. bad that they lost, but it feels so good that we won. Yeah, incredible times to be alive. My name is Tony Lyle, joined by the ever-present Sam Smith, and again, we don't know, James McConey may be joining us at some stage, or he may not be. He is over in Paris, embedded. He is a loose unit. The journalists over there, but what an incredible weekend of quarterfinal rugby. Can we put this out there? The greatest game of rugby of all time. I was basically rock hard for 48 hours. That is too long. You need to see a doctor. It's real sore. You okay? No, nah. Do you everything's mean, chafing. Do, I'm chafing like an absolute... Do you need a cream or anything? You know when you see a horse and it's like... Yep, yep. And you go rock so hard. Yep, I know, I get it. And it's dangling around. Oh, the horse's right. penis, obviously. Oh, okay. Oh, and sorry. it's swinging around. It's all like dribbling shit. Oh, I, I was very much like oh, that. Yeah, it was <laughs> insane. What a weekend. What an advertisement for Rugby Union. Uh, what a incredible few games. Hilarious that there was a shit game and a good game both days. I don't even want to say shit. The other games were still pretty, oh, pretty good. good. Standalone games. Yeah, if you watch those games alone, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's pretty good. But you would almost say those two quarterfinals, the ones held in Paris, they are right up there with any World Cup game that has ever taken place in the history of the Rugby World Cup for Just me. going back through all of the games um, throughout history. I mean, um, that 1992 yeah. quarterfinal we all remember was quite a doozy. I don't remember in 1992. No, that was the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sort of saying no one does. But nonetheless, yeah. what an incredible time. And let's just, let's just rip straight into it. They didn't even have a Rugby World Cup in 1992. No, they didn't. It was in 91. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, do you even like rugby, Tony Lyle? I was, you just piece of shit. I was just trying to progress the narrative here, Sam. <laughs> the, um, it was a fantastic game. Can um, c- should we start with our boys? The bloody All Blacks, so good. Sam Kane, what a freaking superhero! Yeah, and it was quite incredible. Can I just say a shout out to James McCorney? Um, at the after game presser, he came in hot with the question asking Sam Kane and bringing it up to him, saying, "Hey, Peter Omani." Famously sledge you in New Zealand calling you a shit Richie McCaw. Mm. Uh, was that part of your motivation for this win? And Sam, very sort of statesmanly like, didn't say yes, but he definitely didn't say no. <laughs> he definitely made it sound like he had that in the back of his head when he yeah. put on. I mean, was he the player of the match? I actually don't know. Who. Uh, I think it was Artie, wasn't it? It makes sense. They both played out they of their skins. It's the best back row play I've ever seen from Yeah, those I think two. Shannon Frizzell right. had a couple of moments that he, the coaches will remind him about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sort of missing Bunny Aki for a crucial tackle every now and again. But between Sam Kane and Adi Savia, it yeah. was truly outrageous play for basically the entire game. And such a joy to see Ian Foster... Real jazzed about doing well. His voice he, was lost. He, <laughs> he lost his voice because he'd been just absolutely Because he was just screaming, going, fuck you, Irish pricks. I think he was screaming that the whole time. It's crazy. <laughs> he, he was he, doing the Xena call, like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he lost his top register heard, as well. I heard crazy. him do a, quite a problematic uh, sort of um, American, yeah. Native American, like, oh, yes, yeah. at one stage. And I was like, oh, Fozzie, oh boy, oh you want to cut that out? It's and, no good. And then he went back to going, waka, 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 which was really funny, and I really enjoyed it, and so I, it was funny I'm as well. I'm pretty sure I heard him yell out in a wooga. He didn't a wooga? Yeah, he I yelled out that. a sacre bleu. It's oh. sort of just to rub it in the face of the French. Oh, yeah. Oh, because they, they're, oh, they God as well. This this game has all, like, the a most, this round, I mean, has all the most amazing things. Ireland have still never won a quarterfinal. Shame! In the whole history of rugby, they're such a good team. They've been constantly there or thereabouts, but now they're definitely thereabouts, which is losing. And yeah, well, the they were the number one ranked team in the world. All of the pundits, especially the Irish pundits, to a punishing degree, yeah. were saying how this was the team that was going to do it. And I think Ireland were we'll behaving both, like we normally behave. Exactly. I think you'll both agree that we were confident the All Blacks would win, but not as confident as you've been in the past. It was sort of a feeling like. Yeah. I think we will, but if we don't, it's not. It almost wasn't going to be as devastating yeah. as it, it might have been because yeah. you kind of knew Irish had the Ireland had been a great side. The mm-hmm. All Blacks have are on the way up. I think they're really yeah, gelling exactly and finding right. some form. But it was a huge, huge challenge for them, yeah. and for them to be able to do it and sort of 
just remind everyone that this is the fucking All Blacks. Yeah. <laughs> the, I don't know who you, you guys you forgot are. about this for a second, but we're one of the really good teams. And I love the fact that with this quarterfinal, this this Rugby World Cup was going to be the one France is doing really well, Ireland's doing really well. This one could be the one where we get another new winner of the Rugby World Cup and Nabo. Everyone, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm running off Argentina straight away. Sorry, yeah. Argentina, you are a good team. Well, if the, uh, the only way I can see that possibly happening is if both South Africa and New Zealand somehow have a, an abysmal performance in the semi final and it's an Ireland England final, uh, then uh, maybe Argentina, Argentina can England win the final, World yeah. Cup. But you would have to say if Argentina were to win the World Cup, You'd almost say, "Hey, should we call the whole thing off?" Yeah, let's let's just stop doing the sport. Let's do another. <laughs> let's do something else. Yeah, it sort of seems. I do quite like the, insane. I always love it whenever England plays Argentina because they always call it the Battle of the Falklands. Yeah, which... I know they sort of bring up a li- literal <laughs> war, and you're like, "Oh, guys, yeah, I don't know if we." Uh, yeah, I don't know if we really should be bringing this up. I mean, you know, obviously, was it 1964? Maybe that could be the wrong date. When was the? Uh, when was the Maradona hand of God in the World Cup? I think that was very much the Battle of the Falklands was at the front of the mind then in the Football World Cup. Was that 66 when the... Uh, I actually when don't England know when won. the hand of God it's was. It's a different sport. No one cares. But it's still the world, uh, a World Cup between those two teams and the te- the fans were literally like, at each other's throats, yeah, literally, because the Falklands War had just finished. Can I just go back, like, maybe a couple of weeks ago, I said Argentina are always good in Rugby World Cup years, and then I said, actually, Argentina haven't been that good. Um, they've managed to scrape into the finals. Um, yeah. And well done on them, but I don't think it's the year. Well, here they are in the semifinals. They've been Ireland. They've got further than Ireland. They've got further than France. Humbly apologise to Argentina. You are always good in Rugby World Cup years. 1986 was the year of the hand of God. 86? Wow, that um, was... 20 years after we thought. Yeah, I know. Uh, the, what, what I think about that as well is because England are the same and it does seem like they've somehow cheated the system yeah. to get where they are, but you can only play the hand you're dealt. You can only yeah. play the games that are in front of you. Yeah. England at this stage are the only unbeaten team still in the Rugby World Cup, which is insane because they must be so far away of – in the odds for the odds makers of winning the yeah. actual thing, but they are, you know, if you think about it, they're sort of the form team. England. Well, if you look at just mm, wins losses, yeah. If you look at just the marks scri- scribed yeah. onto pieces if of you, paper. If you're just looking at W's and L's, mm. then you, yeah. But if you're looking at the points that they won those games by, yeah, and the opposition, they just beat Fiji. They just beat Samoa. They're going to get fucking trounced by yeah, South it Africa. Certainly seems like they may get booted Surely. to death. Although, uh, did, were we saying that before the semi final last year against uh, last time against the All Blacks? No, I think I uh, my remember. I don't remember because I was at Disneyland. My recollection of that is that it was everyone thought it was going to be a really tight game, yeah. and England had played really well, and we kind of weren't quite gelling. And also, there was like a typhoon at some stage. Oh yeah, we didn't get to play that game against um, Italy. Yeah, it was a typhoon, wild stuff. And then we saved up all our points for that game we played against them last time. Yeah. 6, 17, yeah, it's true. And uh, in the results, it also turned out that t- Pool C completely obliterated from um, the tournament. Yeah, they're, thanks they're, for coming, Pool C. Yeah, Pool C really just took a huge dog in the More beard. Like Pool C, see you later. Wales, Fiji, obviously knocked out in the quarters. Australia not making managing to get there. Portugal and Georgia. Well, you know, well, the winner, had, the winner of that that pool is Portugal. Yeah, they're you, incredible. You have to think so. They. Won one game. <laughs> and that's all you need but to against do. the odds. Against the odds, that against is true. Odds, yeah. I think Fiji will be pretty gutted with their turnout on the weekend, yeah. not being able to quite get there. And really pushing England pretty hard yeah. has to be said. Well, we can look at that in a little bit later, but let's really focus on the big, beautiful boys in black because what a game. Um, shout out to Richie Mwonga, I don't think, didn't get enough praise for just how how well he steered the ship throughout the game. A beautiful break to set up oh. Will Jordan for his try. It was it was stunning. Yeah, it was one of those moments that just kills the opposition. When you see two people break the line at the same time, holy moly, it's yeah. great. If you've been digging up for ages, um, you know, you're down the other end of the field and then a team just busts you open to pile on the points because at that stage that was a two two score go ahead for yeah. the All Blacks, just devastating for the Irish team who've mm. been holding on pretty well and his defense as well. There's been a bit t- chatted about this new, it's the new hot phrase in rugby, which is the scramble defense. Yeah, and Richie Moanga, Aaron Smith were the great exponents of it on the weekend, just tackling mm. everything that moved 
when there was a bit of structure lost in the defence. And he's a tough little boy, he's old a, Richie Mo. He's, he is. I went to the um, I, oh, I went to the Weta Workshop experience, but it's in the same place as the All Blacks experience. Mm-hmm. And they've got a big picture of all the people and how tall and how short they are. Sam Whitelock, very tall. Richie Moonga, very short. What about um, the Urukai? The what? You know, the Urukai from Lord of the Rings. I've never seen that. I don't know what that is. Was it the Weta experience? It was the Weta Workshop experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so, oh, so they don't have the, the Weta character's height as well? No, I don't think so. Cause just it the All Blacks. Was, it was just the All Blacks experience part outside that I was looking oh, at. Oh, it's not part yeah. of the Weta experience? No, 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 no. I think it would be pretty good if they sort of had Gollum there and an All Blacks jersey, maybe a couple of the other, the other characters. Sheep. We should do all the New Zealand things. Chairs and Dale. Oh, no, because that's part of the Lord of the Rings, what we to create. Oh, did they? I'm not just, did we to make Lord of the Rings? Did they? I don't, I don't know. I've never seen it. Is this guy fucking serious? Did you go to the exhibit? What exhibit? The Weta exhibit. Yeah, yeah, Weta workshop. This is insane. You, you're just finding out now that Weta have anything to do with Lord of the Rings? I don't even know what Lord of the Rings is. You've never heard of Lord of the Rings? No, no. Oh, they were in the movies, right? Yeah, yeah. From like 2000... And four? And four, I think Return of the King won Best Picture in 2003. 2003? I think so. Yeah, I did yeah. tracks. But I still have never seen those movies because they just look a bit lame. You think they look a bit lame? Yeah, I think so. They're really great. <laughs> Are they? Yeah. I'm more of a comedy guy, so we'll see. It's pretty funny too. It There's is? Funny bits in it. Okay. What, at one stage. Wait, is that guy from The Office in it? Is Ricky Gervais? Yeah, he's in it, right? He's in Lord of the Rings? Is he Go- Gandalf or whatever his name is? Mm, I don't think Ricky Dumbledore? Gervais is Dumbledore. No, I think you're getting confused. Oh, Dumbledore died. Michael Gabon. Gambon. He died. I think he dies in the movie too. I haven't seen it. What? But, oh, yeah. yeah, he does. Yeah, definitely. And then Richard Harris, who played the original Dumbledore, died as well. I think that part is cursed. Well, well mainly because they keep casting old men. When you cast men who are like in their 90s, yeah. um, they're probably going to die. From the curse. Well, from old age, really. Oh, yeah. They should, just... make, they should let old men play rugby. Old rugby? I think they do. I've played um, a game of, uh, sort of social rugby before. You're not that old, though, buddy. No, no, no. But in the teams, because it's, so, it's like uh, the social rugby, it was um, a charity thing. And there was these president grades dudes playing, and they wear different colored pants. And they, they wear, like, white shorts. And oh, you're thought... not allowed to put a hit on them. If someone's got white shorts, you can't. Smash the shit out of that them because sounds... they might die. Because they're virgins, is that why they were white? No, because they're they're old ass, and so you can see them, and so you oh, you, nice. you see the white pants, and you think, oh, just hang on, if I put a shot on this guy, he'll so they can just explode and half. So they can just walk up and score a try. No, you sort of just put your hand on them firmly and be like, all right, mate, all right, take let's it get in. you back to the home. Yeah, come on now, well, you've wandered <laughs> off, You're co- you've confused and lost again. Does anyone know who this man is? This man is, is very old, and he's shat himself. I love that they care, and you can clearly see in the yeah. white shorts, yeah. it's squirted everywhere. <laughs> Um, shout out as well to Will Jordan, amazing. Yeah. Uh, Lester Fyanganuku, amazing. Mm. Bonin Barrett, amazing. Lester. I oh, shout out to Rico Ioani. Yeah. Telling the crowd to shush. He did tell the crowd Johnny to shush. Getting Johnny Sexton pissed off at him. He infuriated the crowd. I love a bit of that. The crowd had been giving it. It was like, for me, it sounded like they were playing in Dublin itself. It was so it was, loud and so one-sided uh, towards the Irish at all stage. And so if you're going to shout and drown out the hucker, mm. then you deserve to get a little mm-hmm. hand cup towards you at the end of the game and a finger raised lips to say, mm. shush up. I love it. And if that upsets you, then don't sing through the hucker. I'm speaking about geriatric men playing rugby. Uh, Johnny Sexton. Yeah. He's, his career is over yep. with a massive dropout in a quarterfinal. Yeah. Did, he, did that happen to anyone in twenty in 2007 and when we when we were knocked out in the quarters? Did we lose anyone? I'm away? sure we would have. I believe Carl Heyman uh, never played again for the ABs. After, oh. uh, unless he did. And it's not the All Blacks, obviously. Yeah. Um, I'd say there would have been a whole bunch of people who, who cruised off. It's sad to think that some people finished Keith their Robertson? careers like that. Probably. He was good, eh? Who, Keith Robertson. I think he's the reason we lost the quarterfinal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they played him over Chris Jack and Mills Molina in the middle over um, uh, Aaron Major were two of the big, the big controversial calls there. They, um, in, in, 20, in 2007, they had a, a wee bit of thing where you could submit your photo and run it through a magic machine that would tell you which All Black you looked like. And they tried to find the people who looked the most like the All Blacks, and the person that looked the most like Keith Robinson was a literal baby. <laughs> nah, he was a big baby-looking guy. <laughs> My flatmate Nathan Kenny was the person who looked the most like Nick Evans, and I think I was fourth in line. Oh, let me remember. I was fourth in line for Isaiah Toyava. 
which is crazy. It seems, because it seems problematic. I am very. Yeah. Well, I, I wasn't blackface at the time. Yeah, no, of course look. I wasn't. Um, but yeah, it was a. I think they kind of hushed that. Um, that, that that promo a little bit. Yeah, they were like, oh, guys, we're getting some real <laughs> awkward responses here. We need to sweep this under the rug. Byron Callagher was a short Asian man. Yeah, makes Remember sense. That? that was good times. In, in real that life, or is that the guy who looked like him? The guy that looked like him. Oh, yeah, he kind of yeah. looks like a short yeah. Asian man, Byron yeah, he Callagher. he does, yeah. He's got that vibe. He does have that, that vibe. Cool. Um, the uh, shout-out to the fact that we can get two yellow cards, mm. have a penalty try scored against us, and still beat Ireland. Yeah, when that penalty try was awarded and Corey... Uh, Ty- Cody Taylor. Cody Taylor, who's Corey Taylor? Corey Flynn is who you're Corey, thinking of. No, I'm thinking of Corey Taylor, who's the lead singer of Slipknot. Uh, that was where my head <laughs> oh. went. Um, no, Cody Taylor got sent off. I was like, ooh, that yeah. sucks. There we go. Oh, well, it's been a good run. Yeah, I really just felt a little sick in my stomach in that moment. Yeah. But there were some plays from the Irish where you were like, what are these characters doing? There was one, especially at the end of the first half, Aaron Smith had been sent off, and they just diddled around for an yeah. extra minute. In their own 22 after the kickoff and then kicked it out. And you're like, sweet guys, uh, thank, cheers, for, thank you so cheers much. for that minute off Aaron Smith's <laughs> yellow right. card just for no no reason yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, and I think they remi- it reminded me of watching that semi final from 2019, New Zealand versus England. Mm. Uh, except the shoe was on the other foot. When the Irish were attacking, they were just reverting to type and they didn't have any real answers or get up and go. They were just shoveling mm. it along. Are out and just smashing up and saying, let's see what happens here. Yeah, and it yeah, was yeah. nearly working, but just it was relentless. not expensive enough. Well, I think what they were relying on is the fact that they were going to get um, a penalty off us, yeah. um, especially in that part at the end with 37 um, phases in a row. Like, they... Like normally we would give away a penalty there every most days of the week, but somehow this was the game we decided, mm. oh yeah, we'll be a bit disciplined about this. And then bloody Sam Whitelock... Does yeah. exactly what I, Artie and Sam and Kate have been doing all, all game as well. Yeah, and that was a the, turnover. the glorious thing as well. Whistle goes, woo! He'd been on the bench, obviously, um, so he was a bit fresher than the other guys and was able to get in there, use those 151 games of experience to snaffle the ball and shove it right up the backside. And I thought it was pretty hilarious for the person running the PA uh, to immediately play Don't Forget Your Roots by 660. <laughs> Just a real rubbing it in the face of Jameson Gibson Park, James Bundy Lowe Arkey. and Bundy Arkey, <laughs> who were three of probably the better players on the Irish team. Totally. And Matt Hansen as well stood yeah. out, Australian bloke. Mm. Um, just being like, hey, guys, don't forget your roots. Uh, <laughs> a team that you probably wanted to play for your whole life just yeah. for your... And I thought that was a real insult. It's a, isn't it nice when you, like, you, you've wanted to do something your entire life, you get... You get turned down, so you make the best of the situation. You go and play the sport that you love on the other side of the world. You do so well at it. You make the team the best it's ever been, and then you get beaten yeah. by the team that turned you down before. It's oh. brutal. Well, we talked about this last week oh. on the pod, which uh, was the fact that those guys would probably play out of their skins because they're playing against a team that let them down. And mm-hmm. it has to be said, they were all pretty stand-up. Bundy yeah. Aki was oh, outrageously good. Um, Jameson Gibson Park as well, running a clinic – uh, at halfback until he was yanked off. What? Yeah, someone uh, yanked on him st- off. On, st- on, on, on stage. stage. <laughs> they play on stage. And yeah. James Lowe is industrious as ever yeah. uh, out there. But, yeah, was not to be for those boys. And I think another thing that we've noticed from the games, uh, bringing on people like Sam Whitelock at the end, um, bringing on uh, in the Argentina game, bringing on Nicolas Sanchez at the end, those experienced players really bring a lock to the game. Eddie Jones, listen to that yeah, for no. next time when you coach a team. Well, Japan, experience. most likely. Yeah, <laughs> experience goes a long way. It really did. And also noteworthy to say a lot of chat last week about the selections on the bench, people were surprised of Finlay Christie over Cam Roygaard, uh, Damian McKenzie on the bench, and then just going, oh, boys, we're just not going to play you. Yeah. I mean, Aaron Smith got sent off, so maybe the yellow card was a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Where he got a little bit of a break, had a, over half time, so had about a half an hour break. Yeah. in the middle of the game and then came on and just played a second just like a second game yeah and, and so Chrissy didn't get on D-Mac not on leash at all we didn't even use Damien McKenzie yeah the, I, and I think one that of the greatest rugby players this country isn't that it? the strategy in that last game was just to shut up shop and guys yeah. were going to just tackle our hearts out here put Anton Leonard Brown who I thought mm. was phenomenal in that yeah. defensive role he put on some absolutely devastating mm. hits in that last sort of five minutes and I reckon that's him He's booked us 
ticket in the team for the rest of the World Cup on that performance alone, yeah, if he hadn't totally. already. Yeah, surely, surely he did. The, um, the other thing I was going to say is that Ireland, I feel like their, their line-out just isn't a thing. Yeah. Like, they have some great locks. Really they just, bad. They just aren't good at line-outs. Well, of course, they're missing James Ryan, who's sort of the talisman in their yeah. side for the line-outs. And instead of replacing him, um, they've just sort of just had a whack at it. It was yeah. really bad. We got we got two line-out steals, and then the rest of them were just... Yeah, misses, bleh. over top. Yeah, it, wasn't, yeah. it certainly wasn't the strong suit. And I think those are the bits that we're nowadays... They'll, nowadays, by that, I mean, in the... In the cleanup, they'll be really ruining that sort of thing. Mm. Where they got, but manhandled at the set piece in general, both the lineups and the scrums. They were pushed yeah. off their own ball, penalised. Uh, what was the thing that we like? We didn't have a scrum for. Yeah, it was crazy. We had zero handling errors in the entire game. One, one, one. was it? Yeah, there was one New Zealand handling error oh. in the entire game. I think Lester Fang or Nuku dropped the ball, but yeah, there was minimal. Ha- Isn't that crazy? Well, that's the All Blacks of old, and that's that's a semi that's a semi final knock. It gets to be absolutely. Rock, are you rock a semi? Oh, <laughs> and, I thought you were getting rock hard again. And what a semi final it'll be against Argentina as well, who uh, they took care of business. They came from behind yeah. in a scintillating game against Wales. Was a hell of a watch. You kind of thought we're marching towards an inevitable punishing defeat yeah. um, for Argentina here. And then they just said, nah, we're just going to break free carve it up and just kick whales right in the cock and nuts. Yeah. I was um like going into the weekend I was thinking, oh yeah, this is it's it's the northern hemisphere versus the southern hemisphere in every game is it going to be a clean sweep for the northern hemisphere? And Nabo, 3 out of 4 southern. Yeah. I like it you made it sound like you're saying northern hemisphere and yeah. I love hummus. I was saying so hummus sphere because oh, they're, they're up there. Oh, okay. They don't really come down this far. Please stay that way. We're the bomb squad, yeah. all right? Yeah. <laughs> Bring them off the bench. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that – an incredible appetizer. My appetite was so whetted. Is oh, that the right way to say that, mate? Whet- it whetted my appetite. Did it quench your Quench my thirst, an insatiable thirst. Uh, it just a day game as well. Beautiful stadium, it has to be said. Did you get up to watch it? I watched the – I watched the. Um... yeah, I woke up and watched the game. Wow, at 4 a.m.? Well, mm, that would oh, be so like, bit, I got up at about 5.30 mm. – Scrubbed back on the old Sky Go, watched the first half, skipped half time, watched the second yeah, half, nice. and then basically flicked it End over. The game. Uh, and while the national anthem started at Stade de France. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it was still got to watch the whole game. It's a perfect little uh, morning, to be honest. Just quickly going back to the Ireland game, good to see them standing. Um, they, I thought they were standing in, a, in an infinity sign. I thought it was an eight. But it was an eight, yeah. They did it to um, to represent um, oh, one of their number eights who had passed away recently. I thought that was very lovely. Well, I feel very bad now for making fun of it online because I don't know what they were doing. So I was like, what are these fucking losers up to? <laughs> uh, also they didn't explain it. So that's the thing. You if, think the commentator I, could I, I, I was trying to think of this. Any time I've seen a team do something special to counter the hucker, I can't think of a single occasion where it's worked. I mean, I'm sure there'll be countless ones and someone will be like, what about this, what about this? But I was thinking of uh, when I saw it at the, the Black Ferns final, England, in the uh, Women's Rugby World Cup, they stood across the entire field, sort of five metres apart, to make a sort of barrier to the try line. They, they lost. When you see, you know, teams, the Welsh staying in the changing shed, they lost. You see for the mm. French do the flying V against it in the 2011 World Cup final, they lost. Every time they try to do something fancy, you f- I feel like you lose. I Just stand and watch it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. That time, the worst part is watching back and watching um, David Campisi just kicking the ball around yeah. in the back while they're doing and it. And he said that's one of his greatest res- yeah. regrets in rugby yeah. is that he didn't take it seriously and yeah. just went and did his own thing. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff is crazy. When you start the game with like, oh, they're here. I love it when they're like, maybe when they do an advance or something like that, that kind of just shows just a little thing of like, yeah. hey, we're here. We're keen to, you know, we're, we're, we're you up for this the game. Challenge. And um, I think that's cool. It there does feel a bit weird that our team gets to do a hucker and the other team just stands there Well, they watch. can do one if they want to. Uh, maybe it was England who did, uh, did, did like the holding hands one and they sort of walk forward holding hands yeah. and they did maybe go on to beat us. But I remember at the time thinking like, I don't know about this holding hands carry on. You're not into that? Holding hands is lovely. Well, they walk up sort of holding hands like they're going for like a Sunday walk yeah. in the park. They're swimming their wrists that, around. It was weird when they open mouth kissed each other, but I quite like that. I mean, now that is a way to battle the hucker. 
Yeah. I, th- I think that would be a great way to challenge it, and I encourage uh, the Argentinians to get amongst it this week. <laughs> Imagine playing Australia, they just bring out a big, massive picture of Rolf Harris, and they just hold it up. And they don't do it, they just hold it there, and everyone's, while they're doing the hucker, they're like, is that fucking Rolf Harris? Yeah, it's really off That would mess with my mind. I mean, you can really do anything, couldn't you? So you could bring out, uh, like, two trained cage fighters and just have them oh, fight yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah. For sort of a full minute while the hucker was on. Everyone holds up a mirror, so they're doing the hucker back at themselves. I was interested to see Aaron Ooh. Smith. Uh, uh, forgive my ignorance. I'm not sure what it's called, but he had uh, some form of tie-ha. Yeah, um, I think he was a tie-ha on. is smaller, but um, yeah, we're going to yeah, find it out. Yeah, and it's very cool. Please write in and tell us what that thing is. Like, is he allowed to play with that on? Can you keep, keep that on the field? It's weird that he carried it around with him the whole game. Yeah. which was just spanking people on the butt. Yeah, I saw him give someone a good old-fashioned <laughs> noise. <laughs> On the side of the head with it. I love that New Zealand is so good at rowing that we even take one of those into a rugby game. Yeah, nice. <laughs> You've got to do it. Aaron Smith, great Cox. I feel like he'd be a good Cox. Oh, I've, I've heard uh, that he does have a great. Oh, well, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, so does, um, so does the crash is yeah. people with disabled toilet. I, um, I regularly use that bathroom every time I go to. I go there every time. It's, it's the so Aaron good. Smith Memorial the Bathroom. Door one? Yeah, yeah, in the um, Christchurch, Internet, uh, sorry, domestic terminal. Yep. It's all the same terminal. You get how yeah. the terminal works in Christchurch. <laughs> I go have a look, take a wee, think. Thank as you. Right. All right. He's a favourite All Black. He's, he's your fa- favourite All Black? He's my favourite All Black in the current team. Oh, yeah. Who's your favourite of all time? My favourite All Black of all time, probably Jeff Olsen. Yeah. Probably Jeff yeah, Olsen. Good call. Maybe Josh Cronfeld. Yeah. It's hard to tell. Josh, Josh Cronfeld's a cool one because he was, he was at uni when we were at uni. Like, he did. I f- mean, sort of. He did physio when I did dentistry. Like... Like, yeah. we were at the same year at uni, although he'd been at All Black yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, sort of. So, we, you know, we're mates, we've met. He was my rugby coach in Dunedin at yeah. the time. Yeah, so that's why it's been... I think my favourite, I genuinely think my favourite might be Justin Marshall. I just always thought he was, his birthday's the same day as mine. And so I, I learned that, I was like, oh yeah, I like that. And then he's a halfback and they're kind of cheeky. Yeah. That's quite cool. Christ. And he says cool things. Bumpfa, love that. Yeah, well, Me let, my, let, let's talk about this as well because I feel like the commentary on the weekend. Uh, obviously, I was watching it on television. I was having this. I was unable to listen to the ACC's commentary uh, on Radio Hodaki, and you can listen to that again this weekend. The oh, cut, that'll the be good this weekend. It'll be good. But I, I was watching it on television, uh, and it was crazy. I feel like that th- they were stealing the ACC's moves. They were screaming at the top of their lungs. Mm. Uh, at one stage when uh, the Will Jordan try, someone was just like, go boy! Yeah. And I was like, I expect more dignity yeah. than this from the Sky Sports commentator. Sir Grant Nisbet. Well, he was, it wasn't him. I think it was Mills Malaina who was absolutely losing his <laughs> oh, mind. Potentially what? John Kerwin at the end when they blew the whistle for Sam Kane. Uh, sorry, Sam, Sam Whitelock. Whitelock. There was just wanton yelling in the background. It was insane to me that these are prof- professionals – who are supposed to not be doing that. Yeah. The ACC, that's what we're all about here, is yeah. being a fan watching the game. But these people should know better. It was right. wild. It's so funny when you watch um, overseas commentary and they don't hugely favour the All Blacks. No, no. I, I, well, I did watch um, a replay of uh, the All Blacks game and Kal Tinana was on the World Rugby call. So if you're unaware how it works, there's a World Rugby commentary which is piped out all over the world. And then in New Zealand, we get our own commentary through Sky Sport. But the highlights online you can watch will have the world run. Which, there'll be a bit of both. There'll be both out there. And Carlton Anna is the only person who just says we and us the whole time. He's like, right. we had a great start. And I, the other guy's like, yes, uh, the All Blacks started well. The New Zealand rugby team. The South African guy's like, oh, the, the team, the Springboks, uh, who I'm not affiliated with in any way. And then meanwhile, Carlton Anna's like, oh, the All Blacks. They're just unable to He's separate like, church and state. I won. Yeah, I won. I'm going to go drink out the trophy. <laughs> But Mills Molina, almost at one stage, I'm pretty sure he yelled, yes, boy. And I was like, I think that's, you've literally copied Justin Marshall's literally. whole catchphrase. And yeah. you've taken his microphone and yeah. set it into it. And his job, Ed. Oh, man. But yeah, so I reckon Justin Marshall's my favourite. I reckon my favourite. Maybe cu- Jonah as well. Jonah's there or thereabouts. Jonah Lomu. <laughs> yeah, no, Jonah okay. Lowe. Yeah. Jonah Lowe, <laughs> current uh, wing for the Highlanders. He's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Is he named after Jonah Lomu? You'd have to think so. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if that's true or not. but I imagine that all rugby players with the same name are named after them. Like, I reckon, I reckon uh, Sam Whitelock is named after George Whitelock, his older brother. Is, is he younger than him? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what the, his last name is? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I reckon that's how it works. Nice. <laughs> I, uh, what were you talking about before that? 
I don't know. You lost me with this insane thing that the brothers are named after each other. Yeah, they. um, Oh, my favorite all-back of the current team. I is it Richie Mo? Is it Sam Whitelock? I'm a big Sam Whitelock fan. Again, maybe because we have the same name, and also because he's a Crusader. Yeah, I totally get. I thought that would be the way your your cookie crumbled, but definitely Mm -hmm. Aaron Smith for me. Yeah. What a guy. And he's going to go out on, oh, my God, I love him. Uh, the other semi quarterfinals that we can't gloss over, but we will oh have to gosh, treat we with. absolutely cannot gloss over them. They're Fiji versus England. Fiji. Unlucky. The, a, incredible comeback. Two tries in a row. And then just stiffed a little bit. A couple of tough calls going against them. Um, and just not quite able to get there in the end. Mm. Just kicking some boring as shit rugby from the English but hey, it's that's, finals that's rugby. How they get there, yeah. It, it's the classic old school finals rugby of just everything is just turgid and slow and boring, and that's they will just chip it over. Drop goal, which was I was like, oh, I forgot about those. An exciting drop goal. Drop goal's come into the yeah. four this time. I would have the, loved to have seen Bodie Barrett nail that drop oh. goal. It came off a uh, kick, goal line dropout. Someone caught the ball, passed it to him, and he had a riff at it. 50 metres. And he did not get anywhere near. (laughs) He really overestimated that one. Um, But Owen Farrell had a bit of a field day off the boot. Uh, In that game, obviously a bit of drama. People saying, oh, he should have selected Ford over Farrell. And Farrell was like, hey, watch this. Wait a minute, yeah. Kick a shit ton of points. And Fiji, unluggy. We'll see you next time, hopefully, in another... I hope we do, like, I, th- I think Fiji are just on the up and up, eh? With, with them. Well, not according to the World Rugby Rankings, where they did not rise at all somehow. Oh, but I think in the... I think they were, like, 12th or something before, and now they're 9th? They're 10th, as it currently stands, and they had no improvement, which is insane. Right. I don't know how these calculations Spe- are done, but surely they improve a place. Yeah. With the, I suppose they lost to Portugal, so they would have gone down a bit then. But the um, the thing about uh, the rankings is that now South Africa's first and we're second. Indeed, which means that the All Blacks get the chance in one Rugby World Cup, should they beat Argentina and should England lose South Africa, to beat the number one team in the world twice to win one World Cup, yeah. which is just the greatest be, way to do it. a well-earned Rugby World Cup. Well-earned, And it means we go, would go into a second game being the underdog. And I think it means we'd beat a team from every continent in the playoffs. Is that, is that how, true? I don't know. I guess... Is, do we play Antarctica? Is Ireland... It's, is it part of... Ireland is Europe? part of Europe, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of an island, though, is it? Do you still count it? Yeah, of course. Part of Europe, okay, we'll do it. Yeah, it's uh, like how we're part of Australasia. Yeah, I always think that's a bit shit when they're like, Australasia, you're like, ah, oh, I don't know. We actually have our own continent, which is called Zealandia. Nice. But they put us in with Oceania. I'm a more, I'm a real sort of Pangea kind of guy. Yeah, nice. I'm yeah. a Gond- Gondwana land. land. Yeah. Uh, so wait, did we, did we actually beat one from each continent? Well, if we play Argentina, that's yeah. uh, uh, I'm largely saying America. So You're including both Americas yeah, together. Yeah, they're okay. connected, aren't they? Okay, okay. Then, then I don't know how the Panama Canal works. Does that count as connected? And then South Africa, um, South Africa will be yeah. the final. If we so yeah. Europe, Af- America, Africa, and then do we do do we play a, uh, another Australasian team? Well, we sure as shit beat Australia this year. Yeah, we did. So can we just claim that? Yeah, I reckon we claim that. And yeah, and uh, we know it beat Samoa. Yeah, wow. Well. Yeah, well, of course we would. Samoa. But anyway, I'm, I feel like in the playoff game as well, you're like, you know, we're going around the world just thrashing teams. Yeah, oh, it's good. We should play, I was about to say, a team of Martians. And then I realised that's insane. I'm not going to say it. You're talking about Space Jam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, and then the other quarterfinal, which was absolute hum dinger. And I can't believe we're going to speak about, about this for a couple of minutes. Uh, France versus South Africa. What a fucking game. It is cr- it's so awesome to watch a game where you're like, I don't want either of these teams to win. I found out as I was watching it that I, for, and for no real reason, I was favouring France. I wanted France to oh. win. When France would get ahead, I would feel like I'd like it to stay that See, way. See, my thing is that I was born in South Africa because I think France has got home advantage, and that's the kind of thing that gets you across the line in a final. Yeah. But if South Africa... Are then, are then in the final, then they won't have that. So it's one le- lesser thing for us to go up against in the final as the all, as an All Blacks fan. I like mm. the idea of beating the home team in their home final and as, a, as the ultimate <laughs> uh, big dog move. So I think yeah. I was looking forward to that, to playing. Fr- and because there's been a lot of this chat about changing the guard in terms of the best teams in the world at the moment. And I think a lot of people have been saying France is so great, Anton Dupont so great. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've made it clear I love Aaron Smith. 
So there was a part of me that I would have loved to have seen the All Blacks go there and take them apart. Yeah. And just be, it's another little reminder of we, we, are the, we are the boys. Let the dogs out. Woof, woof. Can I just say as well, Eben Itzabeth gets a yellow card in that game. Yeah. We get yellow cards. Yellow cards are the secret to winning. Well, we they talked about can this in Super be. Rugby as they well. They can be, surely, because I guess the team yeah. rises. But you have yeah. to think it makes everyone else real it makes puffed it so out. so hard. Everyone's like, man, this sucks so yeah. hard out. You better come on and play really well. And he came it's, back on and scored an incredible try. Yeah. It was also very funny. He smashed his face into another man's face and then tried to act like nothing had happened. Yeah. Uh, afterwards, he was like, no, no, I'm totally fine. And the guy's like, your nose is Fucked. Did you see him get up after that and he just went and joined the French line? Yeah. He was standing out of the way of the ruck to beat and not be in the way, but it did look like he was concussed and thought he was on the other he team. He was absolutely <laughs> cooked. His big nose all over his face, but he's trying to stay cool. He's like, no, 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 I didn't, definitely didn't just tackle that guy in my face. But sent off for a yellow card and still able to hold Come back out. and do exactly the same thing. Come back on like Aaron Smith mm. did and sort of make up for, for He did. It, Cheslin Colby, outrageous player. Incredible. Is he? He must be the form wing of the tournament. Right, like, and that's saying something because yeah. there's been, there been know, some Pino has moments. been carving it up. Yeah. I mean, Lester Man, and Pino Jordan. Pino basically silent in this game. He did, yeah. he did like three things. Couple, in the couple game. of decent runs, plenty yeah. of fantasy points. I'll have you know. Yeah. But oh, yeah. yeah, I had him as my captain. He, um, was, he was fine. He was fine. I know what you mean. Yeah. He, it was a little bit like that. I uh, thought Dupont came back with a point to prove he played pretty, pretty well. Yeah. But in the end, he just sort of ran out of options, and they just capitulated. I was annoyed that he wasn't wearing a mask. He was yeah. wearing headgear. Well, I'd heard a lot of chat. I mean, to be fair, it was all just conversational. No one from any form of authority, I think it was you, told me. Someone else here at the ACC said he was going to be wearing a Phantom of the Opera mask. And I just took that as uh, confirmed. Right, yeah. I was like, this is going to be hilarious when he runs out with a mask. But no, no, just uh, big old headgear. Yeah. <laughs> I heard um, Andre Pollard's going to wear a tutu in this next game as well. He is? Yeah, yeah. Because nice. he's a big ballet guy. He is? Yeah. That's yeah. cool. I look forward to that. There we go. That's a fact. And now that means there's two games this weekend. Saturday morning, um, it is the big one for us. Oh New Zealand play uh, Argentina. Argentina. And I'm picking, a, I think it's going to be tighter for the first half maybe. And yep. then I think in the end it'll be fairly comfortable. I think All Blacks by maybe 25. Oh, my, the idea that came to my brain just then was 42-10. 42-10. To the All Blacks. With? It's almost exactly what? 12-10 at halftime. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I agree I think, with you. I think, I think it, it's going to slowly pull away, but I do think, I mean, if England can beat Argentina by 17 points, then the ABs can really pile it on. I'd love to see just a good old-fashioned statement again. Mm. But I think, like Argentina, I think Argentina will get up for it. I think for them, this will be... The same way that we played Ireland last week, there was a lot of chat about that being yeah. a final. I think this will be the – they're like, if this we can just do this, then the world's our oyster. Totally, totally. So I think it's going to be a really and big, big game. We need to remember, it's Michael Checker. Like, mm. he's he's a clever rugby boy. And they are good rugby players. We know what they're capable of. We yeah. lost to them in the very recent past. So yeah. I think – I think that's going to really – that's going to fire us. Blow out is, I think yeah. – I don't think it will be. I think it's going to be really close, and then maybe at the end we'll pull away. Yeah. Uh, is, is sort of how I predict it going – but up the fucking ABs. Yeah, <laughs> up the fucking ABs. Uh, and then the other game, South Africa, England. I mean, South Africa, you'd have to say, will we'll crush them. Yeah. I think it'll be a similar game where England will get up, but I just, they just don't have uh, the firepower. I think so too. But then I'm also nervous about England because they've just got – but then South Africa, I was going to say experience in these finals. So they know, they know how to draw out a win. I feel like that game will be a lot um, more of uh, a kicking game. Yeah. If I won't be. I'll be surprised if there are more than four tries. Scored. Yeah, I think there'll be. I, I, I okay, just hear what you're saying, but I just play. I disagree. I think it's going to be for the South Africans at least. There'll be plenty. They showed how they're keen to attack in that last game. Good, good midfield, good wingers, fast, big, beautiful boys. I reckon they're going to carve it up, and then all roads head to France for the following weekend. But we'll worry about that one uh, next week. Imagine if it's an England Argentina final. And the only thing left to do, Sam, is to place our TAB game day good punt. And I'm thinking this week we back the All Blacks. I, oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I think I think it's a smart move. But I think for just the win, you know, that's it's not bold enough. I think we're it's all, a walk in the park. We're, we're all thinking that they'll probably win. This um, is a, we're talking exactly like Ireland. We're talking like before they played. Yeah, but so. different circumstances. <laughs> I mean, the ballsy move would be to put the hundred dollar bonus bet on Argentina winning. But, Are they paying seven dollars? That would be we seven hundred. 
New but, Zealand dollars. But we would not do this because all this prize money goes towards a listener. So we really want a good amount of cash to go to go to those those good guys out there. So what are you proposing? I reckon we go All Blacks first to score. Yeah, love it. So All Blacks first try? points try. Yeah, yeah, First yeah, points yeah. of the game will be the All Blacks scoring a try. Yeah. I'm into that. Should we guess with, between us who it's going to be? Who's uh, going to score a try? I think it will be um, Will Jordan. I think Cody Taylor. Cody Taylor. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You think he'll be playing? Yeah, shit, yeah. I think they've got to mix it up this week. I'm predicting a few selection uh, change of ruse. I think oh. Roy will be on the bench. I think the Argentina are a different team. In Ireland, I think they'll be a bit looser around that ruck. They'll chuck yeah. in Roy Gard. I think Mark Talia will be back. I think Lester will be out of the team. Mm. Uh, I think maybe they might chuck in Dane to start and chuck Cody on the bench or maybe give mm-hmm. Samasonia play. Maybe they might even play Ethan Blackadder. Who knows? Wow. Imagine if they just completely changed it up. The backs are going to be the forwards this week. The forwards are going to be the backs. The what are going to be the forwards? The backs. Oh, okay. Is that what you said? Yeah, I think so. Okay, nice. Did I not? Did I say black? Certainly sound like okay, it. Okay, well, they're the all blacks. That's fine. Oh, nice. <laughs> Get out of jail free. Well, thank you very much for listening, and we'll be back next week. You guys week. are cool. Go the bloody all blacks. It's, can I just say as well, this World Cup, it's in the bag. Oh, I'm rock It's hard. in the bag, Go boys. the ABs. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Bag, boys, it's in the